The more highly developed the potter is as a human being, the better his pot, for there is no real beauty without character. Welcome to another edition of Seek Sustainable Japan On Location. I'm JJ Walsh, and in this episode, I visit Robert Yellen at his amazing art gallery in Kyoto. Robert has generously given his insights on the Seek Sustainable Japan talk show and podcast many times. You can find the latest work at Robert Yellen's gallery in Kyoto on japanesepottery.com or on his Instagram page. Um, hello everyone out there in the World Wide Web land. Hope you're being well and kind, sharing a little beauty in your daily life. Um, welcome to the gallery again on this Saturday late morning. Lots going on. I'm off to Bizen to document one of the greatest Bizen potters of all time, a man named Mori Togaku. His family uh, is very, very old and was even designated an uh, honorable craftsman by Hideyoshi, the warlord back in the 1500s. When he visited Bizen and was so enamored with the quality of work being done, he designated six families. And one of them is the Morty family. And this particular gentleman um, is a giant in the world. I mean, he's beyond a living national treasure. Uh, he has accomplished what no other potter has ever done in the history of mankind. That's a big statement. Wow. So, uh, more specifically, uh, he wanted to replicate the largest kilns that were used in Bizen in the medieval period. They were communal kilns, about 50 meters long. And he wanted to replicate that uh, by himself. So he built a 23 meter kiln, which he's firing now. And that's I'm going to go document. And then he built a 50 meter kiln. And then unbelievably, this is like Hercules. He goes, I'm going to make an 85 meter kiln with no support of the country, no support of the queen or the emperor or, or uh, a company. I mean, there's probably some support he had, which we don't know about, but 85 meters, okay? Just imagine that. And um, it took 26 years to build, it's six meters wide, five years to load the kiln. You gotta have some paint. This is Hercules, you know? And um, I went down there and, and taped that too, somewhere I have it. And he lit the fire on January 4th, 2015, and fired for 107 days. That's just, that's ballistic. No potter, whether you are in a communal situation or a, a government-sponsored situation, has ever done that. There's a piece of his there behind you, if you kind of pan. It's kind of the, the piece and the bottom with like the bird beak. Yeah, so that's a, that's a Mori Togaku piece. There's a small little jar right there I'm pointing to. Oh, by the way, Monday Michiru was here the other day. If you like cool jazz, beautiful singing, orchestration, an amazing artist, aptly titled Enso, a little plug for Monday, uh, check this out. You can listen to it on any streaming device. But that's not what I'm reaching for. I'm reaching for Mori Togaku. And this is a very plump, full jar uh, that he fired in Reiwa 2. So he even has the date on there. I don't know if it's uh, situated the right way. That's his tea bowl over there, which was in an exhibition in 95. This one here? Yeah, so it's in that catalog. The guy is just a giant in the world of ceramics. Um, and he's not only replicated ancient forms, he's done contemporary sculptures as well. So that's my mission today. Um, uh, the next issue of Sake today is going to be on Hagi. And here's some Hagi vessels by Suizu Sensei. Always nice to uh, have those. And in Kyoto right now, if anybody is in Kyoto, it's the 14th generation Izumi Imaimon and he's a national treasure, living national treasure, and he's actually at Takashimaya today. Unfortunately, I won't be able to go, but um, this family has been making uh, imperial porcelain of sorts for centuries and centuries, of course, 14th generation. You can figure out the math. 
and just incredible. And he's um, brought lots of new design styles and innovation to the tradition uh, based in Arita. And if you're ever down in Saga, you can go visit them in Arita. But just beautiful new patterns and designs. And um, uh, he's in Kyoto today. So if you want to meet a living national treasure and you happen to be in Kyoto, go to the Takashimaya, the sixth floor. Tell him Robert Yellen sent you. And you can find the sake cup that I purchased. Maybe they'll even let you have a sip. Interesting, this collection over here. Yeah, so this young guy, uh, he just came by yesterday. His name is uh, Setsu Junji. It's got a nice ring to it. Hatano Zenzo, Urakami Zenji, Setsu Junji. These great sounding names. And he's also really innovative. He does this flowing ink pattern that's very evocative and engaging. Everybody sees different images on them. And the shapes are interesting. Uh, the way he puts on this white slip and contrasting with this, you know, floating cloud-like billowing um, uh, designs, quite, quite um, evocative and engaging. There's some tea bowls of his around here as well. He's based in Kyoto. And I'll be putting them up on my Instagram page um, in the coming days. Nice. And what did you just unbox? Oh, this is um, the great Suzuki Goro, another great legend of a potter. Um, when he was a young man, he was born in the 40s, so he grew up with a lot of uh, craftsman mentality. And his goal when he was a young man was to make 500 teacups exactly the same weight, exactly the same thickness, and exactly the same size. So he came from a crafts background, but really billowed into uh, an amazing artist doing things people have never seen, like huge chairs made of you know, ceramics. Or he, he, had, he, had, he built this incredible jar. You had to be lowered into it by a crane, and he would paint the insides. His motifs are, are crows and nudes. So he'd be in this jar, and there's a bunch of women with their well, anyway, there are nudes and, and with crows. <laughs> he's just a brilliant artist. Uh, Suzuki Goro, he's based in Aichi. Um, Google him. And this is one of his uh, Shino tea bowls. You got, and you know, of course, on these glazed pieces, as we've said before, it's all, all glazed inside, it's glazed on the side, but they leave the base unglazed so you can enjoy the beauty and flavor of the clay and his um, su signature is somewhere there. So this just came today and uh, for green tea, uh, matcha whipped tea that is, not your sencha leaf tea. And he's, he's just brilliant, Tr truly is. I mean, we're talking about two you know, veteran guys who are in their 80s who have done s revolutionary things in their respective styles. Mori Togaku for Bizen and Suzuki Goro for the Mino style. And Mino, of course, is an umbrella uh, term that incorporates Shino. And there's different kinds of Shino. There's A Shino and there's Beni Shino, Red Shino. Uh, there's Yashichida Shino, kind of a, like a Miro design on it. Uh, then there's Oribe and there's different kinds of Oribe. There's you know green Oribe, So Oribe, black Oribe. Then there's yellow Seto and um, black seto. So he's the Mino. He does all of those styles. Really interesting artist. I've written about him. He's on the e-yakimono.net page. Chords. This is an artist down in Karatsu area in Takio. And uh, we talked about Oribe. Uh, this is a Karatsu black Oribe. So he incorporated kind of like a hybrid. Um, his name is Maruta Munehiko, born in 1961. And uh, this piece is going to the south of, of England. I do say so myself. Very nice. Lady bought it for her husband's birthday or a present. Isn't that sweet? I love all the packaging. How your pottery comes and how you package it to send it out too. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, with, with the cords, you know, they all have so their... Packing unit. is, of course, very important. Japan being a, you know, packing sometimes excessively so. But, you know, we send works around the world and Chihiro packs very, very thoughtfully, carefully, art artfully. And she gets fan mail for her packing because you can sense a consciousness in it. Just like you can sense a consciousness of 
the maker of these pots because Lao Tzu said in the 6th century BC, the more highly developed the potter is as a human being, the better his pot, for there is no real beauty without character. So there's no good packing without character too, and she's a very highly developed human being. So that's awesome. <laughs> and international shipping has gotten so difficult. Well, Very you know, difficult. Corona kind of tripped things up, uh, as everyone knows, and we were using, um, you know, the postal service exclusively, but they kind of, you know, stopped because they weren't any commercial flights. So now we use privately owned uh, shipping uh, companies, and it's uh, working fine. So we're we're back on track, you know. Um, uh, thankfully kind of swamped now that the gates have opened and people are coming back to Japan Great. and the, the artists are happy too because they were struggling as well yeah. you know a lot of them were dependent um, on, on you know overseas visitors going to the kiln areas and that dried up and so they had to find other ways of making a living you know becoming a bee, beehive keeper or you know a toll road a ticket taker you know things which were demeaning of their of their status in this cultural iconic world of Japan, and I hope that you know they realize it's just a burp in in in, in time, and they'll get back to what they do best, creating beautiful objects. Um, there were potters down in Bizen making uh, a, sp a specific style of a teapot called a hohin, specifically for one group of overseas people, and they would buy them box loads, and that all dried up. So. Hopefully uh, things will pick up again. Squat tea pour uh, with a lid, um, and you can only get a couple of cups. It's not a it's not a big tea cup. It's a little sencha cup ones, and it's H O H I N Hohin, which is basically exclusively made in the Bizen area. Started by Kaneshige Toyo, the first living national treasure, um, and a lot of people around the world love those little pots. And it was more uh, overseas. Uh, you know, visitors who are buying them. So hopefully, you know, they can get back on track with that. A lot of the work in, in my gallery is uh, stoneware. Uh, I don't have a lot of porcelain, even though I, I greatly admire Imaimon, who I just showed the catalog of, and his father's work is over yonder. But this guy is relatively unknown in the, even the contemporary Japanese world, but certainly very uh, unknown overseas. His name is Sue Oku Nobuhiko and uh, he was born around 1947 and studied with the National Treasure for a porcelain named Fujimoto Yoshimichi or Fujimoto Nodo and he worked with that living treasure for about 14 years and became independent and made a kiln out in a relatively not ceramic known place in Nagano but his paintings on porcelain so this side shows a peony about to flower, about to blossom. And then the other side shows it in full splendor, blooming. It's incredible. And then another piece of his, which just kind of blows my mind, is a night scene. I've never seen a night scene uh, painted so evocatively full moon uh, in porcelain. It's, it's, it's realistic. And then this willow tree. Isn't that amazing? It's so beautiful. <laughs> I can't believe somebody can do that. This book called Listening to Clay was just published. And it's really interesting because this list of potters are talking about their life stories and how they approach work, their philosophies, the struggles. Uh, the, for the first time in, in English, uh, in a detailed uh, book that was just published this summer. And it's the, the work of a couple, the Norths, Halsey and Alice North, working with the great scholar Louise Court. And they visited many, many potters in the 80s and 90s numerous times, and these tr uh, conversations were transcribed by Louise uh, and um, it's just a book that's never been published before. It starts with Hayashi Yasuo, who is in his 90s, uh, and it goes down um, according to age. The last potter is Kondo Takahiro, who's in his 60s. And I have some of the work of these artists here. Hayashi Yasuo um, did this piece, almost an, an illusionary work of deceptive depth, 
like an Escher painting. Uh, and he's in Kyoto. Then we have in Hagi, uh, Kanaita Masanao, he did this very uh, dynamic tea bowl. He's in the book. And then we have Kakurezaki Ryuichi. He did this almost gothic uh, castle-like structure. So I have a, quite a few people in the book. Um, and uh, the wonderful woman artist, um, Kitamura Junko, did this work over yonder. The decorative aspects of it are pretty. This is uh, her part of the book. And then each person gets a kind of title page and then a portrait photo and then numerous pages of dialogue and their work. And since I was writing about this pretty early on, um, the authors also included people who were telling the world about contemporary Japanese ceramics. And people, if you ever get to Tokyo, do visit the Musei Tomo because Kikuchi-san was sharing her passion uh, in the 80s by having uh, exhibitions in the States um, and she had a gallery at the Hotel New Otani in Tokyo showing contemporary, it was called the Kandori Gallery and it's defunct now but that was the place where people were interested to learn about contemporary ceramics. So she was a pioneer and then there's Mr. Sato, he's down in Hagi and he would invite international artists to have conferences and, and workshops together. So uh, his gallery is still uh, there, Saito An, in the beautiful port side town of Hagi, which is one of the great ceramic centers. Then there's Koyanagi Atsuko, who misquoted me, that's okay, in this section. She came from a tableware, high-end tableware family in Tokyo and then uh, had the vision to start showing large sculptures when regional museums were opening around Japan and they needed big pieces, so she pioneered that. Then uh, there's the New York gallerist uh, Joan Mervis, who is so important in this field. She has uh, curated 80 or so exhibitions, put out numerous publications, brought the leading best ceramic artists of Japan to New York City and placed their works in numerous museums around the world and particularly in the States and um, important collections. So if you're ever in New York, go seek out Joan Mervis. And then lastly, I was honored to be part of this book. They asked me. They're me. Hey. Hey. Awesome. <laughs> So, you know, because in, in the early 80s, well, the, not the early, but the late 80s and 90s, nobody was writing about this, so my Japan Times columns became educational material for the Norths. And they would write more, write more, you know, so they would read my articles and then learn about that artist, and next time they came to Japan, they would go visit them. You know, it's a really cool book, folks. So if you're interested in, in, this, in this field, highly recommend it. Go online, grab a copy. Uh, listening to clay and the reason they termed it listening to clay is because many of these artists said that their own ego their own concept of how they wanted to make something sometimes wouldn't fit with the way the clay wanted to go so they had to listen to the material just like you know a good Japanese chef you you, you bring out the essence of, of the flavor of whatever you're using and a lot a lot of these artists feel the same way with the clay you know, they had to have a dialogue with it. What do you want to be? How do you want to be baked? You know, how do you want to be shaped? Uh, and uh, the, 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 this phrase was repeated numerous times by all, m many of these artists. So it's a very simple but deep title. You know, listening to clay, listening to your heart, listening to your soul, listening to the seasons. So if you're ever in Kyoto, um, come on by. I'm dressed very casually today uh, because I'm driving down to Bizen. Uh, uh, you know, uh, the jets, this was given to me. Uh, but, uh, you know, I just only remember Joe Namath, basically. Uh, just let me know if you want to stop by, and I'm happy to just you know, enjoy your visit. It's a living museum. Uh, and, you know, we have the garden back here, but this is, <laughs> this is a, a manifestation of In Praise of Shadows. And if you've never read that book, I highly recommend it by Tanizaki Junichiro. It's a very thin essay um, book, but um, it's shadows hide mystery.
All right. Thank you so much. Thanks, Joy. Thanks for watching and big thanks to Robert Yellen once again for sharing his amazing insights on pottery and ceramics and the artists in Japan. If you're ever in Kyoto, make sure you stop by. What do you think of Japanese pottery and ceramics? I'd love to hear your insights, comments and questions below. Big thanks to all of our guests this year in 2022. Looking forward to an exciting and inspiring 2023. And if you haven't done so already, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. See you again in 2023. Take care, everyone.